Now, an LLM is only as smart as the data you feed it or the specific context you provide for answering the questions that you have. Now, ask it, for instance, about the structure of an NPM workspace monorepo, and I bet you're not too happy with the result. But what about this one? Much, much better, right? So let me expand on that. So when we work with companies and we come in and like help them become more efficient and ship products faster, one of the main issues that we always keep seeing is that teams are siloed. And so is the knowledge. There's not a lot of visibility across projects. And so there's a lot of fragmentation, potentially duplication going on. And this leads to a lot of inefficiency and also kind of like pain when it comes to integrating these different parts to the cohesive overall product. Now, it turns out LLMs have a very similar problem because they have very much visibility of the local file you're working on and a bunch of files around it and potentially some that you provide specifically to the context of what you're currently working at with the LLM. And so they are missing the overall architectural picture. For instance, if you look at this NPM workspaces based monorepo, you have like an application in here, you have packages, they apparently are structured in a very specific manner, etc. And so the LLM completely misses that part. It just sees the different files and how potentially they are related to each other with the imports, but that's kind of it. Now, very often a monorepo can help with some of these challenges, especially when it comes to the visibility part. Because clearly, if I look at this monorepo here, if I'm working in the orders team, I can just go and look at what the product team looks like, the different products there, and specifically maybe the integration points where I need to interface with the feature from the product team. Now, this is much, much easier compared to where the product team has their own repository, and I might not even know where that is. I'm just working off their spec files that they provide to me. Now, monorepos don't come for free, though. They also have their challenges, right? So whenever it comes to scaling on CI or making sure your monorepo stays maintainable in the long run. But that's exactly where tools like NX come in to help mitigate those downsides while still providing the benefits. Now, in order to be able to do so, NX collects a lot of metadata to be able to optimize the operations, like running tasks in parallel much more efficiently. For instance, if we look here at this specific monorepo here, which is an NPM workspace, if I run NX graph in here, it opens up the graph which NX behind the scenes builds up in order to understand what the structure of the repo looks like. And so here we see the different projects and how they are related to each other. But I can also click on these arrows here and see what the relationship looks like and why it is there. So you can see here there's a dependency between from this product to this product and also at the file level which causes that dependency. So most probably here the shop application in AppTSX imports a component from that feature order. I can also go into the actual application here, like let's take here the feature order, look at the product detail view and get more information. So you can see this is classified as a library. It is located in this specific path. It has tags associated to it, which some of the members of this product added, such as like here defining the scope, the domain area where this product belongs to, and that is of type feature. And we also see information about the actual owners that work on it and they're supposed to approve PRs. Now, similarly, let's go, for instance, to the shop application at the top here and look inside that one. You can see this is of type application, but you can also see the different targets that NX knows about. So it knows there's a build target, a dev target. It, if we open that up, it knows that Vite is used for this specific one to build. And it also has information about what specific files are actually relevant for this project. If we go back, for instance, to the tasks part here, and we show all the different tasks, which in this case, there's just a build on these two libraries. But if I open up this one here, you can see these are the files that are relevant for whenever it comes to building a specific product. So there are a lot of different information that is really, really useful to optimize whenever you run tasks or uh, in general operations with your modern repo. And this is exactly the type of data that is also highly relevant and useful for your LLM to make much more informed decisions. So we are always kind of obsessed of developer experience. And so since already for a long time, we have an editor extension. So if you go to our docs and editor setup, there is an NX console extension for VS Code as well as JetBrains. Now for now, the AI editions only work in VS Code, but we're going to expand soon on other editors as well. So go and install that. And once you have installed that, you should see it pop up here in your editor. Now, the main goal of NX console is to help you work in a monorepo. So it, it shows you the different packages, commands that you can run. It also has information about CI, the CI integration with NX Cloud. And most recently, we now also added the extension for Copilot. And so if you have NX console installed and open up Copilot, you will be able to say add NX and then keep asking questions. 
So as before, we can ask what is the structure of this workspace, and it will be able to leverage that project graph information to give much better insight of what the structure looks like. And so you can see here, it detects there are libraries. There's apparently data access libraries, which you can extract from the naming convention as well as the tags that we have associated. There's feature libraries, UI libraries, utility libraries, but there's also an application in here, which is here that AI shop. And now given that, we can keep asking more information. For instance, where should I implement data access functionality for orders? And so now you can see it correctly identifies that you should probably go and check out that data access order library, which is specifically made for accessing data remotely to pull new orders in, to update new orders, etc. But we can also go further. We could say something like, I need to create a new library filtering products. To whom should I talk to? And so now it says like for implementing a new library for filtering products, you probably talk to the products domain team. Team members are Alex, David, Rachel, right? And so it's really interesting because then it even keeps going. Probably it also involves data access functionality. So you probably should also involve Ryan and Sophie. But we can also keep going and actually ask the LLM to help us set up the new library. Now, NX is known, especially its plugins, for providing generators that help scaffold out entire projects with its configuration and making sure things are being set up properly. Now, each of these generators here, for instance, I'm looking at the NX GitHub repository for the JavaScript library package generator. And each of these have a schema JSON file attached, which NX itself uses. But as you can see here, this is basically a JSON file defining exactly what parameters you can provide to this generator, the description for it, information about positional arguments, what type of arguments you can provide and much more. And so this is gold for an LLM. And we are actually feeding it to the LLM as well. And so you can go ahead here and ask a more, more specific questions. And so now we are asking it specifically, you can see how it reads the generator schema. And then it says to create a new library, you can use this library generator, this is the library name, and it gives me here the actual command that I can run for implementing this feature for generating this feature. Also notice how it correctly places it automatically into the packages slash products folder, which is probably what I wanted, but I actually didn't even tell it to do that. So in addition to that, we can just go ahead, either copy the command and run it on our own, run it here with execute generator. We can also here click adjust in generate UI. Because the next console comes with the way to have a visual way of actually running these generators. And so you can see how it pre-fills here in that specific UI, the different parameters. So you could go ahead and for instance, customize whether you want a bundler and check out more information. But let me just go ahead and just click execute generator. So if there are still some questions missing, it will ask it to me. So I'm not wanting a bundler here. And so now you can see how it runs the actual command to generate the product. And if I go in here, you can see it generates a new library, which is pretty much a standard library with like providing the various imports and exports for these different packages for this package and some pre-generated functionality right in here. So even though right now LLMs mostly operate on a subset of files that you specifically provided, they're getting smarter and smarter with each new release. And most importantly also, their context window gets bigger, so you can feed it more data. And this is exactly the reason why we believe strongly that a monorepo in combination with an X enhanced data can be a huge enabler for working efficiently in a software development project. Because in a monorepo, you simply have much more data available that is relevant potentially to make more informed decisions. And the next has a lot of the metadata that can help the LLM reason at a more higher architectural level. And so doing cross project refactorings, etc. And this is actually just the beginning. So the first release basically, because an X has a lot of data about your local workspace. So how products are related to each other, tags, etc while NX Cloud has a lot of information about your CI runs. So which task takes the longest, which keeps failing more often, which tasks are flaky. And so combining that information with the information that NX has and the one that happens at CI level will be crucial for making much more informed architecture level decisions, basically. So that's why I'm super excited about what's coming down the road in the next couple of months. There's still a huge potential of improving this even further. So if you want to try it out, create a new NX workspace or use your existing one. Make sure you have NX console installed. You can grab it from the VS Code marketplace or from our docs and try it out. We're also going to expand beyond VS Code. So stay tuned for that. 
Now, as always, like and subscribe to this channel to get, make sure you get updates as we ship new, new features. Also, as a reminder, NX is open source, so chime in on our GitHub. Also, while you're there, leave us a star. I'll see you in the next one.